Can you honestly say that you know what you're looking for in your AR-15 trigger because you hear folks talk about how crisp the brake is or how smooth the reset is, but what does it actually mean and what does it feel like? Well, today we're talking all things fire control groups, AKA triggers, and at the end we'll also have a sort of a four point checklist to help you grade your existing trigger or really any trigger that you get your fingers on. So let's go. Hey guys, Randy here with AT3Tactical.com talking with you today about fire control groups, your trigger assembly. Next to the BCG, this guy is one of the most complicated parts on your AR-15 because both the BCG and your trigger have moving parts and each component of them, they need to be extremely precise in their design, their functionality, or your AR-15 just won't work. It's simple as that. So that's exactly why you're gonna find a sea of all sorts of triggers out there with coatings and finishes and different materials. But if you can't tell one trigger from the next or even what you're looking for in terms of trigger take up, the weight, the break or the reset, then trying to pick the right trigger, it sucks. So with that, let's get down to brass tacks. We're going to rapid fire the seven parts of your standard trigger. We're gonna walk through some single and two stage triggers, how they operate. And then at the end, we're gonna hit you with that trigger grading system. All right, so the parts of your standard AR-15 trigger, starting with your trigger and your trigger spring. On the front end of this single stage trigger, you have the sear, which engages the hammer when it's ready to fire. The trigger or trigger bow is what you actually squeeze. Uh, then you have your trigger pin holes or your trigger pin hole housing, which also holds the trigger spring. Uh, inside you have a recess for the disconnector and the disconnector spring. And then on the very end here, the flat part, that is what engages your safety selector. As for the trigger spring, it's always the shorter of the two springs in your fire group assembly. And when properly installed, should look like this, with the little tab and the legs both facing forward and underneath. All right, next we got the disconnector, the disconnector spring. Uh, this hole right here aligns with the trigger pin to hold the disconnector in place. There's a cutout here near the rear which aligns with the disconnector spring. The hook on the top here is to capture the hammer uh, when caulking and then release it when it's ready to fire. Now you got your hammer and your hammer spring. The hammer's basically a catapult battering ram held under tension by the larger spring ready to fly forward and strike your firing pin. Down here on the bottom, there's a little notch cut out. That's where your hammer engages with the sear of your trigger. Underneath, you have the hook that engages the disconnector when it's uh, being cocked back. And then of course the big flat face front that strikes your firing pin. Finally, you got your trigger pins. There's two, they're exactly the same. Uh, not only do they keep your fire control group in place, but also allow the hammer, the trigger, and the disconnector to travel smoothly on the same axis at the same speed time and time again. Most standard trigger pins, not the anti-walk or anti-seize one, look like this. A long, smooth side, a notch or groove in the dead center, and then another notch or groove near one end. The center groove or notch is there to keep everything of your fire control group centered and aligned. The one on the end, the little groove on the end, is actually there for riding, uh, for the hammer spring to ride on the trigger pin, which you can see when it's installed from the top down. All right, so that's a quick down and dirty on the seven AR-15 trigger parts. Now, let's get into that single and two-stage trigger conversation, how they function, what makes one better than the other, starting with the single stage I have mounted here. This is your standard single stage trigger. It uh, also includes your standard mil spec triggers that you find in off the shelf AR-15s or some of your basic uh, AR-15 lower parts kits. It's called a single stage because there's only one stage to release the hammer. Basically, you should expect little to no creep or extra travel as you pull until the hammer breaks free from the sear. So here's how it works. Again, you can see as I pull the trigger, the sear starts to slide off the hammer. And once it hits a certain point, the hammer spring catapults the hammer forward. 
Uh, thinking back to our BCG episode, we already know that within fractions of a second after the round is discharged, your BCG slides back, cocks the hammer. Uh, we're talking, you know, faster than you can even release your trigger back forward, which is important because here's where the disconnector comes into play. So because you're still squeezing the trigger when the hammer comes back, you allow the disconnector to grab the hammer and hold it in place thanks to that disconnector spring, which has just enough give or travel that you can actually see the disconnector move ever so slightly as it engages the hammer. So now your slow human brain catches up and you start to release the trigger, aka re trigger reset. Uh, as I do, you can actually see the disconnector slide off the hammer while at the same time, the trigger sear is coming up to capture the hammer. All right, so what makes one single stage trigger better than another single stage trigger? And I, I guess from a beginner, newer shooter standpoint, there's some good, there's some better, and there's some best options. These standard mil spec triggers are good, actually good enough for most average shooters. They almost always have heavier pull weights of five pounds or more. Uh, they're known for your trigger creep, that movement of the sear before it breaks free. And oftentimes mil spec triggers are uh, called gritty or gritty feeling, uh, but they actually might outlast your rifle. Better single stage triggers make improvements to the mil spec design, kind of like the uh, AT3 enhanced nickel Teflon trigger uh, that I have installed here, or that popular ALG uh, advanced combat trigger. Many single stages in this category, they often maintain those heavier pull weights similar to mil spec, but they are enhanced with coatings or polished uh, sear surfaces that help remove that gritty feel and provide a cleaner and crisper break. And then, of course, you got your best single stage triggers as a whole. The, they'll definitely be on the higher end of cost, mostly because you're paying for that research and development that went into improvements to geometries and tighter tolerances on contact points, probably some better springs, stronger materials, uh, various coatings and, and whatnot. You can also find a wide variety of lighter pull weights in the best single stages. There's a bunch of higher end triggers also in this category, but for most shooters, if you're not on that path to competition or precision shooting, uh, or you haven't had a ton of trigger time already to know what you like, uh, the middle tier is probably your better choice. Now we're on to two stage triggers and one of the first things you'll see different right off the bat over a single stage is that the sear has moved up in opposite of the disconnector and the hammer now has a T type of catch instead of a hook. For stage one, you now get a purposeful bit of travel before you hit what they call the wall. And then pressing through the wall is stage two to the break. And here's how this works. Again, notice the wiggle room in the take up stage one. This allows the sear to move right up to the edge of the hammer, but then it stops and the sear can't jump the hammer because the disconnector starts to touch, which is that wall that we talk about. What's happening if you look closely, the spring on the disconnector starts to depress as you push it into the hammer, which opens just enough space until the hammer and sear connection breaks. I right, now just like the single stage, your BCG within microseconds pushes the hammer back down, engages the disconnector, and when you release the trigger, the fire control group resets, and we're back to square one. One of the million dollar questions, I guess, is which one do you go with, the single stage or the two stage? And the answer is, you know, if your goal for your AR is not for specialized shooting, like as fast and as accurately as possible for competition, maybe precisely and as lightly as possible for hunting or long, long range shooting, uh, both trigger types are the right answer. That feel of a single stage over a two stage, it's pretty personal, and many actually use both on different rifles. The right trigger for you should be a balance between anticipation and reliability. The less anticipation of the break, the better, and that comes from a smooth pull and a clean break, but not so light that if you sneeze, it goes off. Also, your trigger should be reliable enough to where the pull, the break, the reset, they're the same every single time. But of course, that brings up another million dollar question, and that is what the hell are you looking for or feeling for in trigger take up and pull weight and break and trigger reset uh, to even know if your trigger's worth a damn to begin with? And this next part should actually help answer that question. All right, let's start with trigger take up, the travel and the creep. Basically, 
it's all the trigger movement just before hitting that wall. In single stages, uh, since you're technically already against that wall, any movement of your sear prior to it breaking free of your hammer is going to be called trigger creep. Mill spec triggers, they're notorious for having excessive creep, but that's uh, what you're looking for here. How much does your trigger travel? Is it gritty feeling? Because I can definitely feel the smoothness of this enhanced single stage trigger. As for two stages, that small little bit of travel before the wall is called the take up. Uh, you'll find varying degrees of take up, plus or minus a few millimeters. Most often, the pull weight of the first stage is going to be double or more of that of the second stage. That means you get a smooth pull to the wall with a surprise lighter pull weight uh, for the brake. This actually helps to decrease anticipation. I think the biggest question to ask yourself about the two stage first is, how do you feel about having some empty space before you fire? Will you benefit from having that additional breath before squeezing off around? For me it does, uh, but it's not for everyone. Let's talk about trigger pull weight next, which can range anywhere from a hair trigger at about one and a half inch pounds, upwards of heavy to almost nine inch pounds. Uh, but there's two things to keep in mind about those extreme ends of pull weight. One is the heavier the pull, the more resistance in your trigger, which could lead to you pulling some shots or less of a clean squeeze. Two, an extremely light pull means uh, a higher chance that it can go off when you don't want it to. So most of us probably looking at changing out a mil spec trigger initially, in which case it's common to look for a pound or two less than your mil spec, you know, six to eight ish pounds, especially if you're sticking with a single stage. But notice, uh, but take notice of how easily your trigger pull feels. Uh, and if it causes you to think harder about how you squeeze to make sure that your shots are accurate, uh, then lighter might actually be better. And like I said a second ago about two stage pull weights, they're almost always uh, two different weights, meaning a four pound two stage might have a two and a half pound first stage followed by a one and a half pound second stage and you'll likely find different combos across the two stages out there. For most general shooting two stages with three and a half to five-ish pounds is probably the right choice. There's also plenty of adjustable versions out there that allow you to mix and match up the pull weights in stage one or two, but again, unless you're on that path to specialized shooting, you're probably not even looking at these yet. All right, so now we're at the trigger break, the part when the sear disengages the hammer and everything goes boom. <laughs> so there's two attributes that you'll hear about your trigger's break. There's the crisp and clean and soft. And I guess you could think of it as the difference between uh, snapping like a glass rod or an icicle versus snapping something like a carrot in half. The icicle will probably have a very crisp snap uh, while the more pliable carrot will probably bend softly before it snaps. So what does that mean? Well, a softer break means more resistance before it finally gives, which much like your uh, heavier pull weight could put you at risk of pulling the trigger or pre-anticipating the shot. On the other hand, that crispy trigger break lends itself to being harder to anticipate, leading to cleaner trigger pulls. Uh, this is probably in an area where cleaner is almost always better. So there's also part of the trigger break called the over travel. It's pretty much any additional rearward movement of your trigger immediately after the break. Uh, standard single stage and mil spec triggers are probably the biggest over travel offenders out there, but you can check by riding your hammer forward just slightly off the sear and then wiggle the trigger. The trigger I have here has maybe two to three millimeters of over travel, but is that a bad thing? Uh, not necessarily until your goal is maybe more consistency, accuracy at a faster rate, then less over travel is something that you can target. Uh, but the crispiness of your break is really what you should target first. All right, the trigger reset is the last function of your fire control group where your hammer is released from the disconnector and the sear catches the hammer again. Uh, when testing your reset, pay attention to how far the trigger travels forward until the sear engages. Uh, how does that motion feel? Is it gritty? Is it choppy? Does it snap into place? Uh, and how well can you hear or feel that snap? 
it's often that feeling of the trigger resetting that prompts the next follow-up shot. So the shorter and the more tactile your reset, the more incremental speed that you can gain. Again, the mil-spec single stage is notorious for a long and sluggish reset, but uh, still probably fits the bill for many re recreational shooters. And there are plenty of lower cost uh, upgraded or enhanced mil-spec options that aren't as long and sluggish. Uh, if you just want to start with the leg up. As for two stage triggers, uh, the same questions apply for, to ask yourself that you would for a single stage as far as grittiness and travel. Uh, but in general, two stage triggers already have a shorter reset from out of the box. I guess I almost forgot to talk about the uh, trigger bows, the curved versus the straight or flat faced. Think of it this way, your trigger bow is nothing more than a simple lever and pulling that lever consistently every squeeze should be the ultimate goal. That said, there's endless arguments for both camps and uh, some who prefer both. In general though, curved offers more uh, even pressure distribution across the pad of your finger because more surface area. Uh, the curve also lends itself to helping guide your finger to the same spot every single time. Flat triggers, they can feel lighter depending on where you place your finger on the lever, but it might not be massively noticeable to average shooters. Also flat face triggers, uh, they can provide more room in the trigger well for your fat fingers or your gloves. The point is, you definitely want to spend some time focusing on your trigger. Focusing on any trigger, really, that you put your finger on now that you know what you're looking for to decide if, you know, an upgrade is actually worth the, worth the investment because your trigger is not one of those parts that you probably want to buy constantly over and over again, unlike the, all the customizable parts in this next video right over here. That's right. <laughs> It's AR-15 lowers parts kits. We're talking bolt catches, safety selectors, mag catches, takedown and pivot pins. It's all in there. It's all next. They're all gorgeous. I'll see you there.